Hey, it's Joseph here. Today I've got this box from Hozo Design and they're the one who makes Mesor 3D or Mesor 3D. Future Laser Measure. I like what they're saying. Let's check this out. On the box, you've got the Mesor 3D written over here along with the picture of what this thing looks like. And going around the side, you've got the app for you to download on both the App Store as well as the Google Play Store. And on the top, it does say Hozo Design. And on the other side, it does say the Mesor 3D Laser Measuring Tool, 3D Premium Combo. The model is M0102-U. And in the box, you can find the target plate, mini tripod, Mesor 3D, which is the actual device, and then Ultra 3D adapter and the USB Type-C cable. So that's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and open it. I've got pocket over here. It does have this target plate. And then this one is a user instructions and smart accessories that can be used with this device, including the case and the monopod, the tripod protection kit, or you can use the protector kit or Ultra 3D adapter. I think that one is actually included. So we'll check this out. And here is how to use the measure app. This is the quick start guide. And it does explain about the measure app in the different modes, laser measure, rolling ruler, protractor, level, floor plan scanning, and curve scanning, and pro laser. I'm actually mostly interested in the floor plan scanning and possibly the laser measure as well. And we can probably use the pro laser feature as well for the Pythagorean mode or the area mode. But I think this mode will be the most advanced feature of this device that you can't get from other ones. And then here is the actual device. And underneath it, we can find another box that contains a couple more accessories, I suppose. So there is that mini tripod and then also the thing that you attached over here and then USB type A to type C cable. And for the actual device, you just pull it out and it's sort of magnetically attached so it will come up easily. And I think this one is meant to be attached somewhere here. Oh, there it is. There is a little hole. You can just thread that into. And then here is the actual device. It's pretty simple. It is not that big, certainly pocketable size. And then you've got a screen on top, which I'm going to have to do a little peel. So there is a button. There's some sort of rolling thing here that's going to help you navigate through the menu as well as kind of roll this around. And also there is a hole for measure as well as picking up the actual distance. And then you've got the USB type C port for charging purposes, very considerate. And also the quarter inch thread over here for you to attach this device or other tripod devices. So you can certainly use this one to just kind of attach like this. And it is just going to rotate around, I suppose. I'm not sure if that's the way it is meant to be used. But I know for sure that you are meant to be putting this on on top of here and then actually use this mini tripod underneath it and attach the device on top. All right, so over here we can see that the device is rotatable quite easily. And there is also a knob over here. As you turn that, you're going to turn the device around as well, or you can just freely rotate with this. And there's also the levels to make sure that you're more or less level on the surface, or if you're attaching it to the bigger tripod, you can certainly do that. And I understand you can just kind of push it gently to angle this above versus lower so that you do a full 3D scan of the room as you rotate this around. And there is a little knob over here to make sure that things are level as opposed to being able to angle. So you can certainly go lower if you like and then go up or you can lower this and then you would not be able to go further down. You can only shoot straight. And since this has been sitting in a box for quite some time, it's going to have to be charged. To charge it, just take the USB Type-C cable and 
connect that. And there is a charging indicator that's coming on to let me know that it is being charged. I'm gonna to have to let it sit for a while. And since I don't really know all the little features of this device just yet, as I just opened it up and this is sort of a first impression of this device, so I'm gonna to have to test this out in various situations to tell you about what it can do and how it can be useful for you in your daily workflows. And since then, I was provided with two different things from Hozo again, and they're all meant to be used with this Mezer 3D device. And here is the little Mezer case that they have provided that can carry all the accessories and the base unit that you were provided in them so that you can easily carry it around. And it is quite thoughtful of them to have a little ring like this for you to attach a little clip if you want to, but you can just simply open this. And in here, you can have the actual unit here and then also the base and have the little tripod positioned in here along with the cables and such tucked away nicely so that you can have all of this together without much of a bulk. And it is all protected in this sort of hard shell case. Very nicely put together, although I found this one to be more useful because this contains not only the base unit, but also a tripod and you can also attach a strap on here but I didn't really need a strap so I didn't attach it and it is actually inside of this case and just open with the zipper you can see that the strap is here or if you need charging cables and such you can certainly put it in there but the tripod and also the measure device is included in here and you can easily close it up like so because of its nice shape. So the actual unit and the base and the tripod is all in here. And you can take it out easily and you can extend the legs like so by untwisting it. And also the central stem can extend as well. If you position it like that, the overall height is about 43 inches, but I don't need all that height right now, so I'm just gonna reduce it back down. So that I can show it to you on top of the table. The handle is actually stowed in here, and I can attach it quite easily, turning this or screwing it in, and that can be just rotated quite easily like that. And I like that because at a job site, holding down whatever the tripod and making sure that doesn't move around was kind of difficult thing to do. And having a solid tripod like this makes it all easy because I don't have to hold on to the tripod in order to do this business. And it is quite important that I kind of do a little bit of tilting as I go through. So having a rock solid bottom that I can rely on was quite important and if I needed to do a little minute control I was just turning the knob to just do a bit of a turns like this and then do a fine control of tilting it up and down and that resulted quite an accurate measuring and again all of this kit can be all within this case that was quite useful for me and all of this was not available as a base kit rather available as an accessory and I think this is almost a must-have for you to be able to do the floor plan scanning as I was planning to. And one other thing that I was confused on was this, where you can just flip this up and then lock it in position so that this can stand on its own so that you can measure the height or have it up against the wall so that you can measure the distance between a surface to the wall, so overall length. So it just works as a regular laser measure in this way. But it will really shine if you were to use other functions such as a point scanner. And I wanted to mention that there are two different buttons, back button or select button on top. And it is kind of hard to do in this studio setup because I got obstruction to all the corners. But I can pinpoint to a corner of a room and then tap. And then I'll point to the second point of the room. So I'm just going to angle it slightly lower so that I can find the corner because I got a lot of obstructions and then tap. And then it's gonna draw a straight line going from that corner to that corner. And then I'm just gonna spin around and try to find the next corner, which is not available on this level. So I'm gonna angle it up so that I can hit a different corner that is actually visible and then tap. 
that is going to register that. And then this corner over here, again, I got quite a obstruction because of the shelf, but I can find one corner at a different height. And this smart device is able to gauge what sort of an angle that you are on and also based on the rotation that you're making. So tap, so it is drawing the rectangular shape of this room. Again, I'm able to lower it a little bit and actually hit the corner on this side of the room and tap. So now that has given me almost perfect rectangle, which is the representation of this room. And then I can send that over to my phone. This is a very simplistic shape of a room, but if you had something a bit more complicated, then you can imagine this process of tap, 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 tap onto every single corners of the room is a lot easier than going through the profiles of the room and making sure the angles are perfect and whatnot. Okay, let me go ahead and start the app, Hozo app, and you can see that Mezzer 3D is recognized here. And then I can start a new project. Project name is for the studio. And then default unit is in inches. Create, and then now I can click on Bluetooth. And then now that has shown up on my phone, I can import that and then actually send this off as a CAD file. And that's gonna be shown on my project. I can show you another project that I was doing, and this is a bit big, and I did a lot more points than this room here, but you can see that that has all registered all around, and I did multiple points just to make sure that I got all the parameters correct, and I was able to export this out. And then if I were to overlay this example onto my project, it actually lined up perfectly. And there is also the curve scanner and rotate measure to start scanning. The problem of this feature over here, although it scans overall profile really well, I need to make sure that this laser does not hit me or other obstruction of object. You have to do weird maneuvers like this and it's not gonna be as accurate as you scan this overall profile on this room due to the a lot of obstruction and it is not giving you the rectangle that I want because I have a giant board that is up against this corner and actually it is showing me that diagonal line by showing you that. So it is actually measuring things accurately but it is not necessarily being best in scanning all the corners so that it is a correct representation. So there's a two different use of it and you can use it however that fits you. But in my case, point and tap to scan the space was a lot better. And you can back out and utilize different type of functions such as level. Tilting this up and down as you can see. So that is a digital level protractor tool for angles and such, pro laser for area calculation and different settings are also available. And just hold it down to turn it off. And of several projects that I have tried this Measure 3D on, I had a room that was quite difficult to measure by hand or manually. Due to the curved shape of the room, the storefront of this unit was curving or waving and it would have been impossible for me to measure that out of tape measure or laser measure. So what I have done is I stood in the middle of the room with a tripod and then set this base and basically carefully rotate it around. I try to angle the laser so that it is shooting up or down where it follows the profile of this property line. I guess in this case it's more of a lease line and you can often see the multile ending onto the space and that is a lease line that I want to respect and I try to follow those lines but if it wasn't available to hit due to the other obstructions such as these things that are in the middle of the way. Then I shot it to the bulkhead that is above, which is in the same line. Therefore, I got an accurate measurement. So I went kind of back and forth between the top and bottom to get an overall profile of this curve. And then I actually got this CAD file. 
And once I got the CAD file, I overlaid it with the CAD file that I was provided by the landlord and they matched up perfectly. That actually told me that, okay, well, both of the drawings are very accurate and I can just use this as my survey material. And that made everything so much easier. Otherwise, I could not even have been able to get this kind of curved shape on the floor plan without the help of Measure 3D. So if you ever encounter a room or a space that has a difficult profile, such as a curved wall or a lot of corners and turns, then you can certainly utilize this to be able to follow those profiles so that it gives you an accurate measurement or a CAD file off of it. So hopefully that kind of explained what Measure 3D does. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to comment down below. And if you had found any value in this video, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these types of videos. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.